So I was all set to report on the uh, the whole cap thing with the New York Times article about Neera Tandon and how she had punched the, her editor from uh, Think Progress during an interview with Hillary because he asked her a question about Iraq. I thought it was really interesting that uh, um, the person she punched at exact, is actually uh, now Bernie's campaign manager. So that was going to be my story. But then... Um, that was Monday, and then by the end of the week, I learned something new that I wanted to share. So there was an article um, that posted earlier in the week in, in Grit Post. Uh, the headline was, DNC bosses contemplating a superdelegate coup if Bernie Sanders leads in delegates. And that's a huge fear that we've had, right, as progressives, because um, the, the field is so stacked right now. And for Bernie to be the nominee, he needs to get 50% plus one of the pledged delegates. If he does that, you know, so the, so the short answer to all of this is if he does that, uh, then superdelegates don't come into the equation. But this article says, you know, by design, the superdelegate system is there to give a boost to the establishment's favored candidates. Well, it, it certainly was when they were all pledged ahead of time for Hillary in 2016. And that that's not the case now with anybody. Um, but they said in the, but they went on to say that Senator Debbie Stabenow, who is we're not a big fan of, um, who is a DNC super delegate, uh, admitted that uh, while reluctant to do so, she may use her vote to, to kneecap Sanders in the second ballot. So they you know so they state that in the article, but then the, her actual quote was, um, you know, should no bargain be struck by the time of the first roll call vote, you know, then the superdelegates would come in. But she's saying, you know, we don't really want, she says, we don't really want to do that. If we have a role, so be it. But I'd much prefer that it be decided in the first round just from a unity standpoint. So she's not saying she's going to kneecap him. She's saying she would rather be, you know, that it rather be decided in the first round. So so that laid the, this whole, you know, like, fear-mongering question. So Don Ford, who is a... Uh, um, Work, has been working very hard on superdelegate reform since 2016, going to all the DNC meetings and really lobbying for to reform the system, helped to put together the new program which is in place, which is superdelegates don't you know, come into play until the second round of voting at the, um, during the primary. So if you go to the next slide, um, slide 15. So I, it's a very long article. There's a link. It's a, it's a Facebook post, public Facebook post. There's a link in the description. You can go through the whole thing. He gives a big backstory. But I just wanted to hit his top three points and then kind of his conclusion here is just to give you guys a little bit of um, information to frame your understanding of superdelegates around. And you may find out something different. And I'm sure that there's uh, they're trying to, to get around this as much as they can. But the number one thing is superdelegates as they were defined before, no longer exist. That was an informal term used to describe an unpledged delegate. And they were called superdelegates because they were both were unpledged on the first ballot and automatically were going to the convention. So these are all those votes that they kept tacking on to Hillary's delegate counts during the primaries because they were all, there's you know, hundreds of them already pledged to her before the primaries even started it was just it was all just you know locked and loaded that's why she was so cocky because she had them already in her pocket um so the the uh, reform to the process was they've been removed from the first ballot they cannot pledge ahead of time they cannot be counted for anybody until it, unless it goes to a second vote in the at the convention um they have become automatic delegates because the way the convention rules are set up, the party leadership needs to be making decisions about how the convention will be organized before the pledged delegates are even chosen. So this is what Donna Brazil meant when she said, you know, setting the menu during the during the convention. So that's his number one point. So superdelegates, as we saw them before, do not exist. So be careful when you, if you still think that that's what's going on. Um, and two, the rule for this was passed within the convention, within in the convention rules. So it can't be changed um, unless they reopen the rules for the convention. So this can only be done last summer, or when this is all decided, or when the convention opens. Um, so yes, there are. There is rumor of, or perhaps even not even rumor, of plans to attempt to reopen the rules at the convention, and get and get that reinstated for them to be in the first round, so they can come in at the eleventh hour. But 
his point is, and this is what caught my eye when I first read this, the point that this can be out organized. This is why organizing now, and we'll get into the uh, upcoming uh, things going on with Bernie at my next segment. But at the end of the primary, the party secretary will determine if there is a winner. If Bernie is ahead enough at this point that there is, that there, then there will be no changing of the rules that could that could alter the outcome. They're not allowed to change a rule like this if it will drastically alter the outcome. So I thought that was encouraging. And then number three, the winner is whoever reaches 50% plus one of the pledged delegates by the end of the primary. So this was a huge win. Last time the first ballot you know, win included the superdelegates, which was, this has allowed them to be added to the total to win you know, during the convention and why the media was able to stack it and spin it uh, the way they did. I see. Okay, so but so we've got clear math. We have got such clear math. We have, we know we need to get fifty one percent of pledged delegates. That is what the focus should be on. Uh, it is, empowers the uh, grassroots campaign, and it hasn't been ever been like this since the creation of unpledged delegates um, started. So one more slide that kind of has some of the kind of what that. Uh, breaks down to Bernie received 47 percent of the pledged delegates last time 47 percent they don't want this number matters because the DNC tried to hide it with the cluttering with the numbers with the super delegates so it right. seemed like it was a blowout right no 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 47 percent um and we saw this happening we were like but wait you know and they're like popular vote and Trump and whatever it was all completely hidden uh and many and many people you know still believe that it was a blowout and this will be very surprising um, in 2016, no one hit the total to win because the math was so messed up. And this was uh, fixed when they changed it to the 50 cent plus one of eligible delegates and only pledged delegates are eligible on the first ballot. No extra things. So, and a couple other little just side bits on that. There is a 15% requirement to get any delegates at all. So this is where the whole, our big, you know, right. 20 million people running um, shoots them all in the foot and in the... I'm, I've got some notes here. In the national delegate math itself, there's a requirement that you have to have 15% of the popular vote in the state to get any delegates there. So watering down the primary with lots of candidates and splitting up support is not going to lead to a brokered convention. I thought that was really an interesting thing to focus on as well. And it will lead to most candidates not getting any delegates. And if you look at the polling, very few are above 15%. Wow. And most candidates will leave the race after Iowa and New Hampshire. This is going to be a very much cleaned out race after the first couple of primaries at the beginning of next year. Because uh, when you don't get any delegates in the first two races, then it's pretty much over for your fundraising. <laughs> Everybody's going to bail on you. And it makes it extremely challenging to keep moving without going back on many of your campaign promises, including accepting money from questionable sources. So... Wow. Anyway, I just thought that was, a, a you know, whether it's controversial or not, or if there's other ways that you can interpret these things, but this is a guy who was very instrumental in putting this into place. So I, I, I believe he is a trustworthy source, and I would love to have him on the show. I know Larry is doing very much similar things in Oregon. It'd be great for them to have a, a conversation about this. Is, yeah. I think it's fascinating. I, I'm, yeah, I would really like to, I've seen Don post a lot of this stuff in Facebook and if Don mm -hmm. happens to watch this, which is doubtful, but if you do, hey Don, we'd love to have you on and I'd like to connect you with Larry, as Laura said, because Larry is a registered parliamentarian. He's been dissecting the DNC bylaws. Mm -hmm. uh, if they are planning some kind of, of bullshit on the first day, um, that is interesting because mm -hmm. we were planning something on the first day as well to make some motions and bylaws changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is good information to know because uh, other people in the progressive movement are like, oh, let's not even bother mm -hmm. with that, a floor fight, let's not even touch it. But they're preparing for one. So it would be yeah. naive, and I say this to Norman Solomon with Roots Action, it would be naive of us not to prepare for a floor action, all right? Um, you know, let's, let's, we're, in, we're at a war here for our lives, and, and this is uh, some solid information. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's positive information, surprisingly. Yeah, well, that's why I liked it. And so I, I took the opportunity just to segue on that uh, slide 19. Nice. Is it next Saturday? So speak, So he says, you know, we can out-organize this. The, the power that we have is the number of people that are behind Bernie's campaign, m way more than anybody else does. You don't find people, you know, pledging to work their hearts out for Joe Biden. So... Um, <laughs> 
Anyway, so I, this was an article that was in Politico. Uh, Sanders' campaign organizes nearly 4,000 parties by April 27th. What I, I like, really liked Fayez uh, Shakir's quote here: uh, "People power is the unique and comparative advantages of the Bernie advantage of the Bernie Sanders campaign," said Fayez Shakir. And so remember, this is the one who got punched by Neera Tandon. Oh, this is the dude that got punched. Oh, okay. Yes, that's that's the whole thing. So he's got someone there who is really uh, savvy with the. Um, the workings of the other side, much more so it than many, last time. Like many people. It says, it says, we are seeing an extraordinary mass participation from a dedicated volunteer base whose individual skills, life experiences, and relationships to their communities allows us to connect with voters in a way that hasn't been done before. This is how you out-organize. You know, DNC is not a monolith, and it's not all powerful anymore. They don't have the money. They aren't focused. They don't have Hillary Clinton. They've got Tom Perez. They don't even have Debbie Wasserman Schultz anymore. It's uh, it, yeah. So the oh, so the map. So this is uh, next Saturday is the organizing um, for Bernie uh, parties, the organizing parties all over the Just country, all the way down to Puerto Rico, and there's some up in Alaska, but. The slide fit better this way. Sorry, Alaska. Um, <laughs> I'm going to one here in Santa Cruz, and it's really interesting because most of my connection with their other burners has been completely digital, virtual through, you know, YouTube and social media. You know, I've yeah, I've met I've met John a few times, but it'd be really nice to actually meet live people in my own community that are burners, and I fully expect to uh, get involved with them, and hopefully, you know, we can help them with you know doing little video clips and shit like that. You know, so um, I encourage everybody to you know, click on the. There's a link in the description. If there isn't yet, there will be. Oh, at the end of the show. No, I forgot to um, drop all of the links in there. I got to do that. We, well, we'll do it it's, if you're watching this later on. But anyway, you put just you know, Google it, gang. Uh, Bernie's uh, April 27th uh, parties, and you just click on this map and you zoom in, and you can click on the one nearest your house and find out where it is, and they'll. I'm sure there'll be cookies. <laughs> Always cookies. <laughs>